What is conditional probability? That's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. This is a viewer requested video. I always appreciate those viewer requests, so be sure to leave yours down in the comments. Conditional probability is a really important concept in probability theory, and we'll be introducing it with this example. What is the probability that at least one of two coin flips is tails, given that the first flip is heads? So here, we are asked about the probability of a particular event given a specific condition. And that's why this is an example of a conditional probability. Let's represent this problem with a diagram. We'll say that this blue rectangle here is our sample space. Every possible outcome of our experiment of flipping two coins exists in this sample space. So if we think about probability as area, then the area of the sample space is 1. Because there is a 100% chance that something in the sample space happens. What are the particular possible outcomes of our experiment? Well, we could flip heads heads, we could flip heads tails, we could flip tails tails, or we could flip tails heads. And in this case, all four of these outcomes are equally likely. They all have a probability of one half times one half, which is one fourth. And we can see that each one of these possibilities takes up one fourth of the total area of possibilities. What is the probability that at least one of two coin flips is tails if we have no other information? Well, there are three possible outcomes where we have at least one tails. These take up three-fourths of the total probability in the sample space. So the probability of this event is three-fourths. But it should seem reasonable to suspect that the probability that we get at least one tails will change when we know that the first flip is heads. What this condition does is it restricts the sample space to the outcomes where the condition is fulfilled, where the first flip is heads. That means that now heads heads and heads tails are the only possible outcomes. Where does the event that we're interested in, at least one of two coin flips being tails, where does that intersect the given condition, that the first flip is heads? They intersect only at this one event here. Heads tails is the only event where the first flip is heads and we have at least one tails. Before we restricted the sample space, this had a probability of one fourth, because it was one fourth of the total area of possibilities. But now our sample space has been reduced to this because of the given condition. And relative to the new restricted sample space, this possible outcome takes up one half of the total probability. So it seems reasonable to suspect that the conditional probability of flipping at least one tails in two flips, given that the first flip is heads, is one half. After going through this example, you might be able to guess what the formula is in general for conditional probability. Before we write the conditional probability formula, let's give names to the two events we're interested in. E is the event that at least one of two coin flips is tails, and F is the event that the first flip is heads. And what we just tried to find was the probability of E given F. And that is written like this, the probability of the event E, and then a vertical line that means given, and then the given condition, F. The vertical bar means given. To the left of the vertical bar is the event or the events that we want to know the probability of, and to the right of the vertical bar are the conditions that are given. So what is this equal to? Well, let's think back to the example we just did. We wanted to know where the two events intersect. Since f is given, we know that e can only occur where f occurs. So where do e and f both occur? In our example, that was only right here. So the numerator of the conditional probability is the probability of e intersect f. But then, instead of evaluating the probability of this event relative to the whole sample space, we have reduced the sample space to only where the given condition occurs. 
In order to measure the probability relative to this new reduced sample space, we have to divide by the area of the sample space, which is the probability that the given condition occurs. And this, my friends, is the conditional probability formula. So let's use it to verify the answer we got in our example. What's the probability of E intersect F? The probability that at least one of two coin flips is tails and the first flip is heads. Well, we already said before, that probability is one fourth. So in the numerator, we have one fourth. And then we divide this by the probability of the given condition, the probability of F, the probability that the first flip is heads. That probability is just one half because there are four equally likely possibilities, and in only two of those possibilities is the first flip heads. So we divide one fourth by one half. What's that equal to? Well, it is equal to one half. So that is how we calculate conditional probability. To find the probability of some event given some condition, we take the probability of their intersection and then divide by the probability of the given condition. All right, now let's check out another example of conditional probability. Here's a probability theory classic we're dealing with card decks. A random card is selected from a standard 52 card deck. What's the probability that the card is a king given that the card is red? First, let's name the events that we're interested in. K will be the event that the card is a king. And then we'll say that R is the event that the card is red. So what we're trying to find is the probability that the card is a king, the probability of K, given that the card is red. So that's given the event R. All right, now how do we find this probability? Well, let's remember the formula for conditional probability that we introduced above. In the numerator, we have the probability of the intersection of the two events. So that's the probability that the card is a king and the card is red. But we want to know what this probability is relative to the new sample space. So we have to divide by the probability of the given condition, which is the probability of R. All right, so what are these probabilities equal to? What's the probability that a randomly selected card from a 52 card deck is a red king. Well, there are two red kings, a king of hearts and a king of diamonds, and there are 52 equally likely cards that could be drawn. So the probability that the card drawn is a red king is 2 divided by 52. And then what's the probability that a card is red? Well, there are 26 red cards, 13 hearts and 13 diamonds. So the probability that a card is red is 26 divided by 52. Now, these denominators of 52 will cancel out. So what we're left with is that the conditional probability is equal to 2 over 26. And this fraction, conveniently, can be reduced to 1 over 13. So the probability that a randomly drawn card is a king, given that the card is red, is 1 over 13. But here's an interesting question. What is the probability that a card is a king to begin with, if we have no other information? Well, there are four kings total in a deck of cards. And of course, there are 52 cards, all equally likely to be drawn. So the probability of drawing a king is 4 divided by 52. And this fraction can be reduced to 1 over 13. So isn't that interesting? These two probabilities are equal. Knowing that the card is red did not change the probability that the card would be a king. And what we have here is a definition of independent events. We say that two events, A and B, are independent if the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A. And if two events are not independent, we say that they are dependent. The idea here is that if knowing some event happened doesn't affect the probability of another event happening, then those two events must be independent. The occurrence of one doesn't affect the likelihood of the other. A card being a king does not affect the probability that it is red, and a card being red does not affect the probability that the card is a king. And then quickly before we go, I'd like to point out that from the formula for conditional probability, we also get a formula for the probability of the intersection of two events. 
This formula is tremendously useful, and we'll be using it some when we talk about the law of total probability. Now, before we go, let me just leave you with an example to try on your own. So here's the practice problem. For exam 1 and exam 2, 40% of students pass exam 1, and 10% of students pass both exams. What percent of students who pass exam 1 also pass exam 2? So the given condition here is that a student has passed exam 1. Knowing that, what's the probability that the student will also pass exam 2? Let me know what you get down in the comments, and I'll leave the solution in the description. With that said, I hope this video helped you understand conditional probability. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. I can hear your voice from all the way up here, dear. Won't you please come to me? You live it up here, dear There's a light where I float That erases all black It makes everything